welcome back to John and Mandy Go RVing. Today we are here in Loretto, Kentucky to enjoy a tour of the Maker's Mark Distillery, which is a must stop on the Kentucky Bourbon Trail. Of course, just some safety things. We do have to keep our mask on and above our nose until we do get in the tasting room. Let's get inside the tasting room. If you want to take it off, feel free to. She's been drinking today. <laughs> a couple of times. Yeah. Hey, don't tell them my secrets now. <laughs> so, if you don't care, put your mask on. You're more than welcome to take as many pictures as possible. If you need me to take a picture for you, just ask. I don't care if it's cheap. So, if you guys are ready, we'll head on down to the base of the hill. Once we get to the bottom, I'll tell you quite a bit more about the history of the property. Let's on this one, guys. Okay, guys, so we began as Maker's Mark in 1953. That's when our founders, Bill and Margie Samuels, purchased the property. One of the main reasons why they chose right here in Loretto was for the simple fact that we actually have a 10 acre limestone spring fed lake at the top of that hill. So the water source here in Kentucky is really what actually drew those distillers in back in the 1800s. The limestone shell takes out all impurities with that water. But the cool thing is it actually adds in iron and it's doing so. So Bill Samuels knew quite a bit about bourbon distilling. How do any of you guys know anything about the T.W. Samuels bourbon? No, not really. There's a reason why. It was terrible. By terrible, Bill actually burned his family's recipe. He wanted to do that to completely wipe away what people thought of the Samuels making bourbon. He wanted a new product to actually be sweet and to actually be smooth, but the main thing is that he didn't want the bitterness that his family's bourbon had. So what him and his wife Margie did is that they actually started creating our mash bill by baking bread. After several loaves of bread, they realized the mash bill that he thought helped or made that sweet taste that he wanted that his dad's bourbon didn't have was 70% corn, 16% soft red winter wheat, and 14% malted barley. If you guys actually look over to my left, you can actually see some of those test grain plots that we're actually growing here on site. Our distillery sits on over a thousand acres. Only 90 of that's what we call Maker's Mark Distillery. The rest is what we're calling Starhill Farms. So with our farm process, we are trying to see what grains do grow best in our climate here at the distillery. So what you all see down here in the lower part is actually the wheat, and what's at the very top is the barley. Sugar state, that's when our fermentation process will start beginning. 
We're gonna add in some of our yeast. Cool thing is with that yeast, it actually dates back original to the TW Samuel's time period. We still grow it here on site daily. With that yeast, it is a jug style yeast. It's made to simply convert those sugars into alcohol. After it does that for a total of three days, it'll actually get so warm it starts to die. It's gonna leave us behind the somewhere between eight to nine percent alcohol, which we're gonna have to start distilling to get that mash and alcohol separated. So with our distillation process, we will start out by a column steel. Our column steel is five stories high. So if you notice the height of this building, the reason why it's so tall is because of those three column steels we have. Each one of those has 16 different peripheral plates inside. So as those mash goes in and through those plates, steam from that base will actually rise and collect that alcohol as vapor. It'll come off our first tail take of what we call our low one, which is going to be right about 120 percent. But at that point, it doesn't have the perfect taste consistency we want our product, we want our product to have. So what we'll do is actually double the steel through a pot steel. It's going to bring the proof up to 130 proof. But once we get to that 130 proof distillate, we run into another issue because it's too actually high proof to put into a barrel and still be able to call it a bourbon. 125 for max. So what we'll do is actually use reverse osmosis on that lake water. That's going to strip out the flavoring of the water. And it's actually going to start watering that distillate down. We're going to go from 130 proof, not even 125, we're actually going to 110 proof. 110 proof is what we call our barrel entry proof, and what that distillate will actually go into a barrel at. physically talk about the barrel itself. All of our barrels are actually made right here in Kentucky at a cooperage known as the Kentucky Cooperage. Okay. Easy enough, right? Mm -hmm. So they're owned by the independent state company, if you guys have heard that name. They're actually a larger company that have multiple cooperages around the world. So all of our wood is coming from the Ozark region. So the first process into making a Maker's Marks barrel is that they're going to lay out each individual staver piece of wood. You can see here. They actually sit outside in season nine months to a year. That's quite a bit more than most distilleries. We do that for the simple fact that aging or seasoning process of that wood is going to actually release those tarins inside of that wood as well. So guys, when you get 
did an Acres 46, like I said, it was Bill Jr.'s perfect version of his dad's bourbon. Those staves are going to look exactly like you see here. The stave on top of that 46 stave. I tell everybody, if you look at it, it's very similar to the process of like searing a steak. Because it's simply that heat's going to bring the flavor into the outside of the stave. Because you can actually see that flavor gap right there. So with those barrels, they look very similar to the one that you see here. Key thing is they're all just on one piece of food grade PVC pipe instead of split up like you see. As well as they're not attached to the barrel. So as they're bringing those fully matured barrels in from those warehouses, they're just going to empty that out of that fully matured bourbon 20 at a time. And that bourbon's going to go in these holding tanks you see. As those holding tanks get filled with the 20, that's what will actually go to recreate that barrel to look like that. And then they'll refill that barrel back up with that bourbon. After that barrel's been filled, it's going to go in our next room for nine weeks. Next rooms are only climate controlled in the warehouse we have. Temperature-wise, it's going to say right at 50 degrees. Just because that cuts out the aging process, so it's not going to age any longer. It's just going to finish nine weeks of those 10 stages on the inside. Yeah. Do you all have any questions about 46? If not, I'll tell you about our private select. So how many of you guys have tried like a Baker's Mark private select before? Anybody? So with our private select, it's our version of a barrel selection. So with most distilleries, they'll pick three from three different parts of the warehouse. They'll just come in and sample it. Which one you like from the other ones? Us, it's a little bit different because we're aging to the perfect taste consistency, right? So what we do is that we've been in partnership with an independent state company and actually picked five states. As those customers are coming in, they're going to get to sample those five stages to make their own perfect 10 stage versus the combination. From there, as those stages go inside that barrel, they'll sit for nine weeks just like the 46. After it's done, that customer will actually receive the barrel, the bottles that the barrel makes, and even the stage combination inside. So, if you notice, I'll pop this over for you. So, you can see a lot of these barrels when we get into the next room, the ones that are laying on the floor will actually have somebody's name on it. It is because it is going back to that customer. So you can buy a whole barrel if you want. Whole barrel. Key thing is you have to have a liquor distribution license. Thank you. So guys, what you will see on those bricks is actually 46. What's on the floor are some of our product selects. So with that product select tasting, they're going to come into a room exactly like you see behind you. They're gonna have it set up to where they can taste those five staves. Those five, five staves have been cooked at a different time and temperature that's actually gonna produce a different flavoring within the finish of the bourbon. So when you get into the five, it's gonna be our American baked P2, the only other American oak that we use other than our barrels, if they have more of a sweeter taste. We're gonna have our French cuvee, it's gonna be French oak, it's gonna pull a lot more of that butterscotch nut through. We're gonna have our 46, which is really in the middle, it's gonna pull a little bit of sweet, a little bit of spice. Then we're going to have our Mondiant steak. Mondiant, think of more of like a creamier, darker chocolate. That's what's going to pull through with the Mondiant. And then last but not least, it's going to be spice. Spice is going to have a lot more of like a nutmeg spice compared to what you think of like a heat jalapeno spice. So with the first pie we're going to get started with today, it will be our standard paper. So with the standard makers, it's going to be a 90 proof. It's going to be super sweet, super smooth. It's going to go down exactly like a candy truck. <laughs> yeah, man. Very disposed. The good stuff. <laughs> Let's try this out. From what we have actually <laughs> Have you been a barrel selection or maybe part of the barrel selection? Yeah, ma'am. Yeah, ma'am. So, with the Mondiant set, I explained the look at Mondiant as in like a Hershey chocolate versus like a cake. Mocha was more of the dark. See that? Yeah. So, what they did is took a sample from that barrel. When they took that sample, what leaked out was actually. Kind of sticky, really, but it makes it into like a brown looking substance. What it is is just the angel share, once it turns into, once it hits oxygen, it actually turns into a black fungus and sticks on the face. Hmm. So, if you notice how some of the barrels has that leaking through it, that's actually what it is. I feel like this one's like pretty fresh, too. 
So guys, if you haven't looked up yet, make sure to do so. This piece was done by Del Chihuly, like I said. This is a Turchin style of art. He started on it right around the 1978. He's perfected it to what you see here. It was actually completed in 2013. It was installed in 2014. Each one of these colors represents something to our distillery because it's actually entitled the Spirit of the Maker. So the red's gonna represent the red wax, the yellow's gonna be the grains, green's gonna be Kentucky, blue's gonna be the lake. The auburn color you see scattered throughout every other panel is actually gonna be our bourbon after it's been aged in a barrel. Nice. But then notice throughout every other panel, there is a sweet little cherub or baby angel. Yeah, yeah. That's actually gonna represent our angel share or that evaporation I was showing you all. you will have any more questions if not sadly 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 our time together has come to an end but from here we're gonna head into the gift shop nice once we get inside there if you guys want to hand dip your own bottle what you'll do is just go to the checkout counter and pop the bottle without wax bring it back to me as we are going in though i'm going to start wrapping your all's glasses so if you need me to actually wrap them together just tell me i do not care a bit too as well as if you need safe two lane directions, I'll get out of here. If you all took the small little narrow road in, let me know where you're going and I'll hand them to you. So guys, I hope you all had a great time while you're here at Makers. Like I said, most importantly, we're now considered drinking buddies because your reason come back to see me. <laughs> yes. As well as most importantly, drink responsibly. So guys, let's head on out of here and you all have a great afternoon. Thanks everyone for joining us today, and if you found any of this information useful, please give us a like and feel free to subscribe. Take care everyone.